Welcome to Dale Frazier Photography. In today's video, we're gonna be covering five tips that can help improve your macro photography. So let's get to the video. Thanks for tuning in to Dale Fresh Photography. If you're new to our channel, I'd like to welcome you and introduce myself. My name is Dale, and I'm a working photographer here in East Texas. Springtime is in the air here in East Texas, and I know what it is across the, even the northern parts of the United States, because I've got buddies that are sharing pictures with me up there. But springtime brings out a lot of flowers, brings out the bees, it brings out so many fun things that you can do with macro photography. First of all, we'll go over a real quick definition of what macro photography is. Number Number one, a macro photography image is basically like if you take a picture of this feather, and let's just say this feather is two and a half inches long. Realistically, what would happen is you would have a one-to-one -one ratio on that, on your sensor. So macro photography is basically a way that you can focus closer using a specialized lens on a smaller subject and still fill up the frame so that you get that great almost kind of portrait shot if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over five tips. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to cover five tips real quick and then we're going to go out and shoot. I've got some marigolds out there. I've got some wild honeysuckle that's coming up and that's just one of the fun things that you can do with macro photography is you can be playing all day long in your own backyard. So tip number one. Tip number one is to get a decent macro lens. That's going to help your macro photography go a long way. There's a lot of lenses out there. In today's video, you're going to be seeing me use this 100 millimeter macro lens and it's made for the Canon cameras. As you guys all know, I shoot with a Canon camera. We do, in a lot of our videos, we've been using the Canon Rebel XT. In today's video, we're going to be using a different camera because I don't have a macro lens for that Canon Rebel XT. However, the one we're doing the video with right now is the camera we're going to be using. And it's a Canon EOS R6. And then this is the RF100. This is the RF100 lens. That, and it's specifically designed for macro photography. So for number one, again, there's so many lens choices out there. You guys can look at some of the aftermarket stuff and even don't be afraid at looking at like KEH for some of the used equipment because I've bought some really good lenses and cameras. In fact, we bought our Canon Rebel XT from KEH as well. <clears throat> number two, one of the things that we need to talk about real quickly is the depth of field. And if you guys have been following along with our video series, we've done a video on depth of field and kind of describe it and go more into detail on how it works. But when you're focusing on a subject really close to begin with, as, as you will be with macro photography, you need to think about your depth of field because it can dramatically change your image and your image quality because your depth of field is going to be much much smaller so for example using this feather that I just dropped in the floor you could actually only have the very tip quill in focus or the entire feather in focus depending on what f-stop that you use as you guys know if you're using like the f 2.8 you're going to have a very narrow depth of field and when you're zoomed in or, or you've actually moved your camera so much closer to the subject your depth of field is going to be really really shallow a, one way to get a greater depth of field is to use a higher f-stop number which is actually a smaller aperture when you use that higher number or smaller aperture you're going to be de decreasing the amount of light that's coming into your sensor. So that's where tip number three is going to come into play, and that's going to be the use of a tripod. Use of a tripod is going to let you shoot at a much, at a much slower speed and still maintain a good amount of depth of field. And we're going to, I'm going to show you some images. We're going to go out here in a minute. We're going to go out and we're going to shoot some, and it'll all make a little more sense. But... Depth of field is something that you definitely have to think about differently when you're talking about using a macro lens. The other thing that you can do to combat that is going to be 
focus stacking. I told you guys last week we was going to be doing a video on focus stacking, but to me it makes more sense to go ahead and do the intro to macro photography, show you guys how you can improve your photography, and we can talk about focus stacking towards the end of this, and basically that's where you're going to increase your depth of field as well. There are a fair amount of cameras that are new on the market that actually will do an in-camera focus stacking for you. I don't have one of them, but I've been doing focus stacking for a long, long time, and I'll show you a picture right now of a daisy, and this is like 19 shots from front to rear to get this entire daisy in focus using focus stacking and then processing in Photoshop. The next thing that I want to talk about real quickly is going to be something that can really increase your productivity when you're talking about macro photography, and that's your choice on your time of day when you go out. As many of you know, everybody that does portrait photography or any of that would love the golden hours. The golden hours is your first hour of daylight or your last hour of daylight, and sometimes the last hour is even considered a blue light. But the golden hours especially is really helpful with macro photography when you're talking about trying to get bee photography or even lizards for that matter because in the mornings the the animals or insects are still cold and they're more sluggish and they're sl slower moving which actually helps you get some better pictures and I'll throw up a few pictures here of both the lizards and some bees doing it in the early morning light. The next thing that I want to talk about is, is there are some specialty strobes out there that you can put on the front of your lens. I have had one in the past on a different Canon camera and it is actually pretty awesome because it will throw the light in the right spot but those are super super expensive. One other thing that you can do which is just a real quick, a real quick cheap affordable trick or tip whatever you want to call it is just to use a pocket flashlight. These little pocket flashlights made by Olight or whatever, I've always got one in my pocket. I keep it with me all the time, but it's a great way. I mean, this light will light up a bee real easy. It'll light up a spider real easy. It'll light up flowers and a lot of your smaller subjects real easy. And it gives you a whole, you can add a whole nother depth to your image just by focusing some light down onto your main subject and kind of using your f-stop and your depth of field to blur out the background and maybe even have the background go darker quicker just by using a simple flashlight. Again, I'm not going to knock it if you guys can afford the, <laughs> the strobes that go in the front of your lens for the true macro photography. They're awesome. Again, I've had one in the past. I just didn't use it enough to justify keeping it and, and I sold it to put it more towards some gear that I would use, but they are phenomenal if you have one. It really will help your macro photography. The last and final tip, which would actually be number six, if you guys have been following along, you know that I love to wear knee pads with me. You're going to find yourself squatting down and you're going to be getting down in the ground and the knee pads just kind of help make your day a little bit easier. And if you can stay out longer because you're comfortable, you're going to increase your activity rate, if you will, which is also going to increase your performance and make better pictures overall. Knee pads are common overlooked deals. If you guys are into gardening, you may already have one of those that you can throw down. A lot of people don't actually like wearing the knee pads like I do, but you can buy one of those little kneeling pads at Tractor Supply for a couple of bucks. It's just a little foam deal. I'll show you that when we go out to the garden and we start doing some of our macro shots and we're going to be shooting some marigolds out in the garden and i'll show you guys that so enough rambling i hope you guys have enjoyed the tip so far let's go out and see what we can shoot i'll post up the pictures while we're finishing up this video of some of the stuff that we've that we were able to capture just right here in the backyard and guys macro photography is a fun thing one thing we didn't talk about and i wanted to point out real quick while we're taking a couple of pictures of this feather in here is macro photography is another great way that you can actually do some product photography and end up with some good stuff. If you can tell the difference, here's the, with the light on, here's with the light on low. It just adds a little bit more light than what we would have in here naturally. And as you can tell, this is a real simple setup. You're looking at LED lights that are lighting this scene up 
but as you can see it kind of looks like they're going across real slow in real life it doesn't look like that at all but it's actually kind of cool just kind of shows you how lighting works again this is a real simple deal you could set up to do product photography I'm set up already to go over here and shoot the marigolds but when I went over to get the little knee pad the gardeners little pad that you throw down to keep your knees out of the dirt I actually spotted a friend of mine so hang on we're gonna turn the camera around and get over here and try to get some macro shots of this little guy real quick now, I don't know how well he's gonna show up but he's bright green right there in the center of the screen let me zoom in a little bit get on him a little bit closer but he, he he lives here in my little garden shed where I keep miscellaneous garden tools and he, a lot of times when I come out here he's there. He's green today. Yesterday he was brown but stand by I'm going to go get my other camera and let's get some macro shots. For the most part he's used to me <laughs> at this point and uh, you can't see me shooting with this other camera but I've got it to the right of what you're looking at. And that's one of the great things about this macro photography is it's just so much fun, guys. Move this one leaf down out of the way. Guys, I don't know what kind of tomatoes these are. My wife picked these up and they're almost a black color and they're a cherry tomato. So as they turn green, they're ripening, but I've never seen one quite like that. And again, guys, this is where tripod comes in super handy. We're going to shoot this, I'm going to bump it back down to about F4, give us a little bit of depth of field, it's going to give us a lot of green blurred out in the background, but that's just a beautiful fresh tomato. Right again, like I say, the, the sun's peeking out between some clouds, so we're getting some really good highlights and shadows in this. And then also with the cloud, it's like a big, huge softbox. But that's just absolutely beautiful, guys. Uh, again, I just, I love the macro photography. You can look at s small stuff in such great detail and just really have fun with it. And you don't need to go on vacation to do it. You can do it in your backyard. With the macro photography, one of the things that we've been doing on our photography group is we've been doing a da daily challenge. I've been using my macro lens quite a bit this month simply because I love all the springtime flowers and, and the bugs and the stuff that come out in the springtime. And I'd love to invite you guys over to the group. If you guys really enjoy sharing photos, that kind of stuff, we've got a great group over here. It's called Inspired by You. I'll put a link down below. Again, guys, we appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. I hope each and every one of you have a blessed weekend. Love to see you over at the Facebook group. I also understand not everybody does Facebook, and if you don't, that's all right, too. Feel free to find me in one of the other photography forums, Pixoto or one of the other ones. We, I do enjoy that as well. Again, guys, if you enjoyed our video, give us a big thumbs up. And until next week's video comes out, which we probably will be doing the either, we're either going to go into a little more depth with the macro photography or we're going to do the focus stacking and probably do both. But until next week, be sure to check out one of our playlists. Again, I hope you all have a blessed week. And let's go shoot some stuff.